So pleural effusion is an accumulation of fluid between the layers of the pleura. And we're going to get to this, se this section next, but I want to draw this out first. I want to draw the pleura. So this is our lung. And the pleura is basically the tissue that wraps around the lung, surrounds the lung. And normally the tissue is very tight to each other. They're pretty much right on each other. If you think about two pieces of glass, have you ever had two pieces of glass? You put a little bit of fluid between them and they pretty much stick to each other. That's what this is. You have two layers of tissue. There's a tiny bit of fluid in between the two, in that space between the two, and it's going to cause them to stick together. It helps them move, move around each other a little bit more. And the last thing I want to add is that this outer layer, layer of the pleura is going to be ad adhesive. It's going to stick to the chest wall. Okay, It's stuck to the chest wall. No matter what, that outer layer is stuck to the chest wall. We're going to see, we're going to see why that's important in the next lecture. Okay, so this is the pleura. The pleura. Normally, there's pretty much no space in between the two. Normally, it looks more like this. Okay, they're stuck right next to each other. There's a tiny bit of fluid in between them. Now, the problem here is in the pleural fusion, you get accumulation of fluid, and the fluid can either be transudative or exudative. What, what do I mean by that? What does transudative mean? Transudative means fluid gets in due to changes in the Starling equation. So let's change our drawing. So we have all these vessels in the lung and these vessels if you change the star starling equation this is basically what happens in edema okay you change the starling equation for example you increase capillary hydrostatic pressure what happens you have increased hydrostatic pressure here they're going to push in into this space and you're going to get fluid coming in and fluid's going to fill up the space and you get a pleural fusion okay next the other thing that can cause it is the de decreased capillary oncotic pressure the same as always same as in edema same as always, you go from, you have decreased capillary oncotic pressure, fluid always goes from low to higher osmolarity. So fluid's gonna go into the pleural space, and now this is what our lungs gonna look like. This is one layer of the pleura, and then now you have a second layer of the pleura, and it's gonna be filled with fluid. Okay, let's, let's color it. So it's, it's filled with fluid now in between the two pleural layers. So, how do you get increased capillary hydrostatic pressure? This is simple. That's basically from too much fluid building up in the lungs. So something like left heart failure causes that. Left heart failure causes fluid build up in the lungs, increased hydrostatic pressure, and then you get a transudative pleural fusion. And then the, the way you can get decreased oncotic pressure is you can have decreased protein. So pro, that's something from like nephrotic syndrome or hepatic cirrhosis. Nephrotic syndrome, you're peeing out your all your protein. Hepatic cirrhosis, the liver normally makes protein. Cirrhosis, liver doesn't work. So you're not making enough protein, so there's low protein in your blood. You get decreased capillary oncotic pressure. You get a transudative pleural effusion. Next is the exudative causes. This is pleural effusion resulting from increased capillary permeability. And there is some pathology that's going to cause this increased capillary permeability. Let's change your pen. So pathology examples include malignancy, lung cancer basically, pneumonia, tuberculosis, SLE, all of, all of those cause inflammation, increased capillary permeability, same as always. Finally, chylothorax is when you have impaired thoracic duct lymphatic drainage, so you get too much lymph in your, in your lungs and it's going to go into this space instead and you get this exudative pleural effusion. So let's erase all our drawings now. And the way we can diagnose and differentiate the two, because we want to know what's the cause. Is it going to be a transudative cause or an exudative cause? As you can see here, this, these causes, they're all bad, but you want to know which one is which. The way you diagnose it is you measure the, you get some of the fluid from the, from the pleura, and then you measure the protein in the LDH. What would you expect the protein in the LDH to be in a transudative cause? Will there be any protein in LDH in this pleural fluid? The answer should be it should be minimal, okay? It should be very low, because there's no problem with the capillary permeability. It's not nothing's gonna allow the protein to move back and forth. It's just pretty much liquid water that's gonna be able to move into that pleural space thanks to the Starling equation. On the other hand, in the exudative case, what's gonna be the protein and LDH levels? Remember now. Remember the whole problem with exudative problems is you have an increased capillary permeability. So that means the protein, the LDH, LDH is an enzyme lactate dehydrogenase, uh, also basically another protein. So they're, they're going to be able to go through these capillaries now because of that increased permeability. So they're going to be increased in an exudative cause. So that's the key differentiator. So this is very important to know 
but it's easy to understand because if you understand when an exudated causes and a transudated cause. Now the way you treat this is just the thoracentesis, thoracentesis. Same as always, whenever you get fluid build up, so you get fluid build up, cardiac tamponade, um, basically that, that's what the one I remember. You, you stick a needle in, you remove the fluid. Simple as that. Thoracentesis in this case, in the tamponade, it was pericardiocentesis. Okay. So that's it for pleural fusion. Uh, just pretty easy. Just remember the difference between transudate and exudate, the, the basic underlying reason, and then understand this diagnosis, this protein and LDH thing, and you'll be good to go. Okay.